You're paying for a campsite? Six dollars. Six dollars. But I gotta find a pen. Did they not take credit cards? Um, cash or check and this little envelope. Six dollars for a campsite. Three dollars if you have like the National Park Pass, which we do not. And then if you have a non-developed campsite, I guess down by the water, like you wanted to pitch a tent, four dollars a night. Is this in your budget? It is. Six is way under budget. Mm. So the water and the sewer and the 50 amp work great? Primitive campsite. So we did have a picnic table with a cover over it. So that was nice. And a fire ring with the cooktop one, like the grill top one or whatever you call it. So those were the amenities. There is a vault bathroom down there. We didn't go in that. <laughs> but the views here are amazing. Amazing. Okay, so now the water here. This is probably prettier than Magnolia Beach as far as the water. But I read online that the water is not safe to really get in here. And that may be an old post. It's fly. Um, but we weren't really getting in the water anyway. I did stick my feet in and it was pretty chilly. Especially compared to Magnolia Beach. So, will you come back? Absolutely. And I think I'll wait and get the site way at the end. So, my recommendation is there's campsites up top which people complain about road noise. Is that fly bothering you? Yes, he's from me. Let me see if I can get him up the window for you. There's campsites at the top when you first come in. Uh, they all have the little pavilions. Those are like a curved one. They're a little different. But people complain about the road noise because it is right off the highway. The second step down, still on the paved road, also has campsites. They're all the same price. And then if you continue past the pavement onto gravel, the road is still very... It was fine for us to drive on hard-packed gravel. Those sites are down closer to the water, so the views are better. Plus, you're like two tiers down, so you don't hear any noise from the road. And Well, let me tell you what I liked about it. Okay. It was 69 degrees last night. It was. And Finally, we got out of the heat. Bonus, the sites down here at the bottom are pull-through sites. So, they're like the little horseshoe sites um, with your little pavilion. So, we didn't go all the way down because we weren't. We were kind of afraid, but there's a big loop at the end, so you can get turned around. You don't have to back anywhere, so... I will definitely come back. I will stay on the bottom and I will try to get that in sight because I think the view there was even better than our view. Now this is in between Vegas and Reno. Yes, it is. It's like 5.45, 5 hours, 45 minutes from Vegas headed toward Reno right off of 95, like right off of 95 on Walker Lake. The next closest city is... I want to say Henderson, but that's wrong. Hancock, maybe. It's where they have all the bunkers, like from World War II. Over 2,000 of them. 2,427 of them. Oh, dang. I didn't think it would be right on a number. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. They do have a museum there, but we got here late yesterday. We're leaving early today, so we didn't get to check out the museum. But online, people talk about how cool the museum is. So maybe next time we'll plan to stay longer. And we can go down for six dollars a night. I think I can afford check it. Check out the new stuff, yeah. And I think it's only thirty-six dollars for seven days. And it's beautiful here. It is warm now during the day, but it was beautiful last night, and the views are spectacular. I mean, there's the lake and the mountains, and then that way there's the mountains, and then that way there's more lake and more mountains. So how can you go wrong? You got the best of both worlds. All right, so let's get all packed up and ready to head out to our next destination. Sooner or later, we're going to hit a more than a one day stop. Oh, something else I also wanted to talk about. Um, and I was reading about it online and then we've seen it since we've been here. The, the effects of the environment on the level of the lake. And I won't get all deep into the environmental well, we'll, aspects of that. We'll show them all those. There are signs, signs periodically the throughout the campground that shows what the lake level was in past years. And it's crazy. It's gone down a lot in 60 years. It's gone. And I also read that the boat ramp is inoperable now. The lake's too shallow to even put a boat in it. So there was somebody kayaking or canoeing in an inflatable this morning. A lot so of the lakes out that, west are getting really low. It's very dry and very low, and it apparently has been low for a while now. I mean, I think some of these campsites would have been maybe underwater at some point, but not any longer, so we'll get some shots of those 
signs and try to show you the lake and ask, you know, like show you the, what do you call it? Anyway, the <laughs> point of view from where the sign is to where the lake is now. So the lake level in 1949. 49. Look right behind here. us. How far down that thing dropped. About halfway down these steps is 54. And then down by that little building was 60 something four maybe. So in six years it dropped from this to that. To 2022. Five years. 54. Oh, you're right. Six Five years. years. Five years. Got me confused now. Five so years. either way, from 2022 here to that, it's a long way down. It's just a short so that means 60 the top some years. Of that little plateau right there used to be the lake. So a lot of the campsites, maybe even the one we stayed in last night. The lake was up to here. Available. Here. Definitely where we stayed last night would have been underwater in 1949. So when you walked down there, did you hold your breath? No, I didn't need to. I might need some oxygen because it's hot. So now I'm curious another 10 years Where what that lake's going to be. be. Got to come sad. visit it quick before it's all gone, guys. Very sad. All right, so on our way out, we noticed something we didn't notice coming in. The oldest marker here. The oldest marker right here is from 1882. So if you can see how much water so is that really means gone. the second level of sites where you're a little protected from the road noise and the sites that we stayed in and the primitive sites that are even further down by the water were all underwater in 1882. The only ones above water were these top ones that I showed you um, that are the back end sites. So that's how much this lake has gone down since 1882. That's crazy. Crazy. That's scary. It is. It makes you wonder where'd the water go. Alrighty. Well, let's hook up again all let's the way. Let's get hooked up and out of here. Head towards Reno. Why can't you keep the camera still? I'm just gonna say, <laughs> somebody recommends a boondock spot, gives you a coordinates. Coordinates. Maybe a little more research should be done before just taking it. Hold it still. Hold it still.